burst of draw and to get some extra cards on the first turn of the game with that Squawk and Seize ability. I see a couple energy sticker in the hand, but they may have to be squawked away immediately. I just don't think we have many playable cards here. Do you want to even attach to this Iron Hands EX or are you just going to forego it altogether? This is a hand that you're very thankful you led Squawk Ability X with, to be honest, because there's not much going on. We are, unfortunately, Ross, having to get rid of two energy stickers. What are you doing to me here, Joe? <laughs> Shashi, just going to read the card, I think. And here's the <laughs> thing. I sure. don't mind getting a bit of energy in the discard pile nice and early. Oh, my God. Because more of energy. energy sticker. Oh. What has happened, Ross? It's just more energy. Zap dose, energy, energy, energy. Generator boss? No. <laughs> this that. is poor. And the problem is, you've already drawn into six energy and you've got one prize. There's only eight left in the deck, so your generator doesn't even stand that much chance of hitting. They're going to attach, retreat the Squawk Ability X, keeping Motivate as an option for later, I imagine. Maybe also just having that slightly higher hit points in a pass. Andrew. Oh, my word. Oh, betrayed from that early hand, and the Squawk and Seize did not help out. Cross your fingers that Shashi plays that only copy of Iono this turn. <laughs> you really want a new hand. We have the Teal Mask Ogre Pony X on the board for Shashi. New from the Twilight Masquerade expansion. A fantastic partner with this Raging Bolt, that Teal Dance ability, allowing you to attach one Grass Energy to it, and then you get to draw a card, a little nice refund there to keep you ticking over nicely. And Shashi immediately has Ultra Ball. Importantly, is able to discard a Lightning Energy in the process. That is going to help unlock your Professor Sada's Vitality, the main way you can power up Raging Bolt EX in a turn, which is definitely going to be the priority here. And we've been saying that this is a deck that can hit 280 on turn two, go on turn one, going second. Yep. Well, it's turn one, you're going second as a 230 HP <laughs> Iron Hands in the active. So, were we lying all along? Because if Shashi <laughs> goes and gets a big two prize KO here, with the hand that Andrew started with, this could be a quick game one as Shashi goes for their own squawk ability because, you know what? In this deck, you want to go fast. Yeah, both archetypes utilizing the squawk and seize, but it looks like Shashi has the better start so far. Already able to discard one of those important energy, get a Teal Mask Ogapon into the mix. We will have to get a full value Sada, as we're going to see a quick uh, Poker Gear 3.0 here. Looking seven cards deep to find a supporter. Let's see, do we even want to take this? If you take the Sada's Vitality and just use it for one energy, you'd have to find another Teal Mask Ogapon and commit a board space to it. You still can reach into an Iron Hands EX, it just becomes a little trickier. Yeah, you need four energy, there's one on the Ogre Pond, you've got your manual attachment, one from the Sada here, so you would need a manual attachment of a fighting energy, and then you would need a second Teal Mask Ogre Pond with that Darkness energy, yeah. both of which are in hand, actually. So now, all you need is a fighting energy attached to the active, and that will give you the KO on Iron Hand, so maybe we weren't lying after all. <laughs> Is Shashi going to put another Teal Mask Ogre Pond into play? No, going to keep that board space open and see a fresh six cards here from the Squawk and Seas. Looking for either an Earthen Vessel or a Fighting Energy. Is it there, Ross? Yes, it is. There's the Earthen Vessel, which will get that Fighting Energy, guaranteeing the turn one, two prize KO on Iron Hand. Andrew needs so much next turn. You're going to need a big explosive turn. You've already lost two energy sticker. You've lost a bunch of energy. You're going down by two prizes. You don't even have a Maridon on board yet. This is why everyone was scared of the Raging Bolt Ogre Pond deck, because yeah. it does this. Yeah, it does it so consistently. And in this matchup, this is a great place to be. <laughs> Just having these amazing knockouts that you can churn with Andrew having so many multi prizes on board pretty much at all times. He requires his own multi-prize Pokemon to function in his own right. So this really shows the strength of the Raging Bolt Ogre Pond archetype right before our eyes. Yeah, it's doing so well. And it's just, I mean, when you play the deck, you keep thinking, well, it's not going to keep doing this. It kind of does. It's bad matchups rather than lack of consistency, which is keeping the deck down this weekend. And here we go with that yeah. Raging Bolt. 280 damage, KOing the Iron Hands. There was an argument to leave the Zapdos in the active, maybe. But then you kind of need them to reach onto the Raging Bolt. That's right. And you're not <laughs> playing. You, any Pokemon recovery, really? One so top deck. Oh, it's a double turbo energy. Is Andrew going to pick up his cards? He's shaking his head. He's not happy about it. I don't even know what top deck at this point even helps you. You would need a supporter, and you would need 
You would need to have a research, get rid of all your energy and cross oh. your fingers. It's a pass. It's a stark contrast. <laughs> Shashi has had everything going his way, has another Sardin loaded for next turn, has Earthen Vessel, so there'll be no issue in taking another knockout this turn. And, you and he's just going to set up another Raging Bot in the back in the meantime. You don't need nearly as much to KO the no. Zapdos as you did the Iron Hands. You just need two energy here. You will need a Fighting and a Lightning onto the Raging Bolt just to actually pay for the attack. Yep. You don't need any extra energy to get the KO, but there's an argument about how it's going. Your best bet is to try and get just Grass on the bench and just be discarding them so you can be chaining these attacks easily but I, I don't think we're getting many more turns before Andrew <laughs> just decides it's over. Yeah, this deck has so much reload, especially with energy retrievals, which are finally just coming into the hand now for Shashi. So we shouldn't have any issue getting additional teal dances here. I think there's already grass in hand. There's plenty. two in hand. Yeah. To go with a two on the bench. Look at and this. It is just <laughs> flowing so smoothly right now. This is what everyone feared. The deck is so ruthlessly consistent at maintaining multiple KOs, going to throw away the Iono, knowing that they are going to be the aggressor for the remainder of this game. There was a one Iono in the list. That was Andrew's hope. It was never going to actually hit the board, <laughs> not after you saw Andrew no. start and your own start. So we're going to see Adshashi going up by three prizes here. And for Andrew, I mean, you don't need to save too much time. These should be quick games. It's not a match that we necessarily need to concede early, but you now have three prizes. Your board is a squawker million. Your hand is terrible. We finally top decked Ultra Ball. So we're playing the game, but we're still miles behind. We still need a lot here. We can get Maridon EX, and as we know, Maridon can do so much for this archetype. But then you don't have any energy. Do you go Raid and Greninja here just to draw some more cards? You want to draw two and then just not have any energy in hand either? Yep, there just we concede. go. Andrew <laughs> has decided that he's too far behind, as expected. But we got here, and Shashi has been forced first. As we're getting down to it, the jamming tower is that tech stadium card. So you are at least shutting down the use of rescue board as well as forest seal stone for Andrew. And we only phase one stadium bounce. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah, just the one copy of Town Store in the deck list. And that's so. literally it. Goes and gets, ironically, goes and gets your tools. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so shut off Jam and Tower and then go and get your tools since they're now live again. Of course, we know how good Shashi's turn one was last time going second. That's why Andrew has forced him to go first, just to try and get something rolling. You get the first turn with supporter cards. You, in theory, if you can use a Squawker Billy and you can use Professor's Research, hit some generator, hit some energy sticker. You can have some real explosive turns going second yourself, and then you get the first KO. You take the initiative here because you do not want a repeat of what happened back in game one. This is a hilarious prize check. Check your Sardas. <laughs> They're really important. I think because we're going to score concedes away, Palpat and one uh, Sarda. Shashi just wanted to keep on top of that as well as your energy that are in fairly low counts, and we're going to shuffle that up, and it looks like Shashi's going to be content getting a fresh six here, and he's going to lose that power pad in the process. Yeah, not ideal. Sardo, the absolute engine of this deck, accelerates two energy, which equates to 140 damage with Raging yes. Bolt's attack, while also drawing three cards. That is where this deck really starts coming in. Yes, Teal Mask will draw you cards and accelerate energy, but you've got to have a Lightning and a Fighting on each Raging Bolt. Once you've got that established, yeah, you can keep your deck rolling along with Grass Energy and Teal Mask Ogapon, that's fine. But the first few turns especially, you need those Professor Sada. Shashi going to shuffle things up. I'm not sure if there were even any other playables in the hand, or we just have to throw everything away here. We Could bench the Teal, teal mask. mask. Yeah, I think that's about it. It's all just cards that are more useful later on. So Shashi's going to have to pitch a lot of decent resources and just look to find some more basic Pokemon and energy here. Even a turn attachment of energy onto a Raging Bolt EX could be handy. Yeah, just start getting that rolling. Well, Lots of grass energy, a Sada, and, and is that an Ultra Ball? Yeah, I think we have Ultra Ball. I think we want to probably use the Teal Dance first here. Yes. You just want to have highest odds of drawing into another Pokemon, to be honest with you. But no, we are going to Ultra Ball first, by the looks of things, for Shashi. Yeah, you really want to, I mean, presumably Raging Bolt here. Yeah. You've got Sada to use. You want to try and get an energy onto that. Do we have Lightning or Fighting in the discard from the early discards? No, so I think, I think discarding the Fighting energy does make some sense here. It depends where you're going to turn attached as well, of course. This is why I kind of like the Teal Dance, honestly. You want another Pokemon right now, <laughs> but maybe he just wants highest odds of finding a Lightning energy. 
or something like that. So that's also in the mix for him next turn. That could be in the consideration for Shashi. Yeah, take the Pokemon out, and then you've got a slightly higher chance of hitting Lightning Energy off of that Teal Dance. Not a good shot, but there is always a chance. I mean, if nothing else, you've got some. You got your Pokemon down. Obviously, you're not going to start on this turn because it is your first turn going first, but you're setting yourself up for a decent turn next turn after you get your energy onto Teal Mask Ogapon and draw yourself a... Boss's orders. Boss's not orders. Too handy, but we are just going to get that manual attachment in. So Shashi can pass things over to Andrew. Let's see if they have a better time of things. Yep, already it's looking much better. I see a supporter, so we're already playing the game a lot more here. And I see Ball Search. Andrew can begin to draw cards even with their Greninja that's currently in the active position as well. And if it looks like be. Iron in hand and a Generator in hand. Yep. So I'm not saying we have to go turn one amp you very much. But I'm saying I'd like to see a turn one amp you very much. Oh, wow. Nice couple of cards. That's Picks up the Squawker Billy and the Raikou V. That's really nice. That means you don't have to go and search for it there. And these, these new kind of a ride on decks are weird because they're playing Squawker Billy, Luminion, Radiant Greninja. There's a bunch of non lightning Pokemon that you're kind of needing here. It's no longer one Maridon gets your entire bench. Yeah, that's why you see three copies of Ultra Ball in Andrew's deck list to sort of supplement the Maridon EX's ability. That still might be the search here from Andrew's Ultra Ball, though. We'll, might want to get some Zapdos established early as alternate attacking options. Also, this deck search will tell Andrew that the Prime Catcher is prized as well. That may have been coming into Andrew's thinking with holding on to this Arvon. So an unfortunate change of pace here. Andrew might have to be forced into Iron Hands because of this. Yeah, it's not ideal. This is the problem. Before you've done your first search, you don't know what's prized. We are actually eyeing up the Maride on there from the Ultra Ball, as you suggested. But when you find out one of your lines is closed, you can't find it out until you get that first search. And that is a little bit of a problem. But we do have Maride on. Maride on will search a couple of Lightning Pokemon, if you like. And then you can start working on this. And Ampy very much on to Greninja. will take two prizes. And weirdly, even though that Squawker Billy is in Ampu very much range, you're kind of going 2 2 2 here for your prize map most of the time. So you don't even really need to Ampu very much the Squawker Billy. If you Ampu very much the Greninja, then you are just on a 2 2 2 prize map. We are going to keep our bench one slot open and not use the tandem unit just yet. We're just going to see the five cards from Electric Generator first here. It's oh, a whiff. and it's a whiff. Oh, Andrew has got to be feeling like this game is just not his. After, you, <sighs> after the game one we just saw, to then get a whiff off of a generator, the first generator you actually get to play, it's in game two, and you get a complete whiff with no energy. It's so savage when Sashi is literally sloshing energy around the board every single turn, guaranteed <laughs> hits from supporter, <laughs> teal dances non-stop, and you're just having to white knuckle every single one of these item cards. It's going to be a score concede getting rid of a lightning energy ross so energy sticker is live now for andrew at the very least so we can't we can start seeing some coin flips at the other side of this hand also we pick up some energy the forest hill stones being shut off by the jamming tower oh Shashi's jamming huge tower. tech card is coming in clutch here that is absolutely huge because the rest of the, the rest of the hand we got energy 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 nest ball oh not again that is a fine hand if there isn't a jamming tower but there is a jamming tower and once again I mean, how annoying is it when you play you play Generator, you hit no energy, and then you end up with five energy in hand, or, you know, <laughs> four. It's just, that's not fair. It's just bizarre. Shashi doesn't have many draws, at least, this turn. He's going to use the Ogre Pond first, just for one card, before the Professor Sada here. Another Jamming Tower isn't too helpful, so it's just going to be three cards from Professor Sada. You can only attach one of these energy. May as well be a Grass, keep the, fight, the fighting energy in that discard pile for later. Can Shashi find any more draw here? Yes. There's Nest Ball, Grass, and Energy Retrieval. So we do have a few more additional draws here. We are still looking for Lightning Energy, though, if he wants to launch any attacks. And it doesn't really feel that worthwhile to go for a single prizer for him. So may just continue to chill behind this Radiant Greninja by the looks of the hand. Yeah, I don't mind this at all, because again, Shashi, very much like Andrew, is on a 2-2-2 two, two, two prize map. KOing a Greninja for two prizes, yeah, that's absolutely worth doing. Ko and a Greninja for one prize, what's the point? You've still yeah. got to take out free two-prize Pokemon, whether you KO Greninja or not, and you're discarding energy. Why, why waste the resources? Great point. So Shashi is going to just use some of these Bull Search 
I'd like to see another Raging Bolt, to be honest. I know that it's decent to get another Teal Mask Ogapon just to draw one, but I think having Bolt established on board, basically just mo multiple Ancient Pokemon, so important so that you can Sarda every single turn of the game. It may open up a line for Andrew to KO the Raging Bolts, but they may not have enough damage to reach there, uh, based on the hands right now at the very least. So Shashi should be pretty safe with this Ogapon. Yeah, the Ogre Ponds should be all right. You're going to get an Ed card to it. You're going to draw an extra. Yeah, when we play the Energy Retrieval, yep. then we get the Energy card on. We get to draw an extra card. And the thing is, the more energy you bank, the easier it's going to be to stream these attacks yep. in a couple of turns' time. That energy is all going to come in useful at the end. There is an Ultra Ball if you want to get another Raging Bolt here. Yeah. Do you have cards you don't mind discarding? You have another Jamming Tower and another Ultra Ball. Maybe you just spend it all. No. Shashi's just going to pass things over. Hold the hand. You know that Maridon very rarely hand disrupts. It's another top deck of Lightning for Andrew. So this is going to be a big two cards here, Ross, from the Radiant Greninja. It's an energy sticker <laughs> and an electric generator. So you've got enough to potentially be... The thing is, you, again, you don't want to KO the Greninja unless you're using Iron Hat. There is a... Oh, no, you need to retreat. <laughs> well, you can take the one because the Squawkabilly is in play. So you can take oh, the one on Greninja, yeah. then Iron Hand Squawkabilly later. Yeah, so I think a Raikou v KOing, KOing the active is still relevant. It gives you a lot of work to do but it's a lot more relevant than Shashi's KO on a single prize Pokemon. Because you can get four energy onto an Iron Hands here. Now, you need to double hit off of the generator That's and true. hit heads on energy sticker, but then you attach from hand, boom, four energy, amp you very much, but there's no pivot option and you've used your attachment for turns, so you can't just retreat the... <laughs> it's a standoff, Greninja. Ross. We're just going to be <laughs> hiding behind our single prizes right now. Andrew, not many options to play. Just going to hold everything oh. and pass things over. Doesn't even play the energy sticker, but that's <laughs> all right. It will come in later, Joe. It's going to be fine. You're promising us that the energy sticker is going to be crucial at some point. Is that what you're saying? I love that card so much. <laughs> I tried so many decks with energy sticker, hoping it was going to be good, and it was never good. Andrew's done what I failed to do so many times before, made a good, viable deck with energy sticker. I just want to see it in action. We do see energy coming out here from Andrew, from the Earth and Vessel, I believe. We've got a Lightning and a Grass, and now you've got all the energy you need. You've got the energy for Raging Bolt, but also extra Grass means extra energy on the board, extra draws with Teal Mask Ogapom, and now we are rolling. Actually draws another Earth and Vessel. You can see the synergy just oozing out of the archetype. It feels really odd to see three different energy types, but when the Ogapon is fueling damage output and draw power, it's flowing so beautifully. And I think Shashi does have boss's orders in hand as well. So I think we will start to see some pressure this turn. I think boss is in the middle of the hand right now. Yes, it is. Yeah, so. we do have a boss presumably going to go after that Iron Hands EX, yeah. which is the biggest attacking threat. Takes two prides off a of Greninja, three off a of Squawkabilly. Uh, there are two Iron Hands in the list, so it doesn't really, it doesn't completely get Andrew off of Iron Hands for the rest of the game, but it does make things more awkward and take away one of those precious energy attachments, which are more precious for Andrew than they are for Shashi. Again, it's looking like a really smooth turn for Shashi. We'll have to commit the Lightning Energy from hand onto this Raging Bolt, so it won't have many attackers lined up, but we'll be initiating that prize race, and it feels like it's definitely worth it at this stage. Although Shashi is debating possibly Oh, I guess they're missing a pivot right now. You can't manually attach to the Radiant Greninja to retreat. So we are still looking for a piece here from this Ogapon. It's a poker gear. gear. So now I suppose you have to use Radiant Greninja. You could be taking another turn off, honestly. You can conceal cards the lightning away, and it gives you the option to find like an energy and a switching card and still have boss available. No, that doesn't come together. So we're going to have to Sada now. So now we could still draw into Prime Catcher. That would be the big change here. That's the only thing you're going for. Once again, we do not want to KO the active Greninja. It doesn't help our prize map. We need Prime. That is the only thing that's going to unlock it, and it's no. not there. They're nice and pink and shiny. <laughs> you can see them easily in the hand. Just and a pass again. <laughs> look at this. Just building a huge board. I feel what do like we see from Andrew? I think when Tashi gets going, we're going to be absolutely fine for energy. There's nine energy on the board here. So here comes a concealed card from Raining Greninja. It's an energy Boss's and orders. a boss. We see a little shake of the head there from Andrew. That is not what you're looking for. Well, I mean, you can initiate a two-prize race this turn. We've been holding on to Generator, and we've been holding on to Sticker. 
Here's the energy sticker. We see the flip. It's hey. a heads. First a... ever energy sticker heads I've ever seen on stream. Broken card. Now we can <laughs> maybe get... See, there's still no pivot outside of a retreat, so this generator is huge. You whiffed on the first. You're owed a double hit here, Andrew. Are we going to get it? No, single hit. That's not enough. Well, it should be enough for this turn, I think, right? I Has think he got a pivot for the Raiding Greninja? I'm not too sure, actually. Maybe that's still holding him back. Because the I problem is, yeah. you can attach to either Iron Hands or Raiding Greninja. You can still arm press, yeah. but then you are locked into having to amp you very much to Squawk Billy later on in the game with your other We do have Iron the boss's hands. orders, though. But I would have thought if we're using boss's orders, we would attack with Raikou V instead, just as a more efficient option, and you would get a fleet-footed card for free. I agree. So I'm surprised we're putting three on the Iron Hands. You're going to have jam. to attach Retreat. You could boss arm press the Squawk of Billy and be taking two. That works, honestly. But it feels like it could have been on the Raikou instead here. Yeah, two energy on the Raikou beats three energy on the Iron Hand. And of course, Iron Hand so useful oh, later. We're, we're hiding again. <laughs> we're taking another turn off. We are taking another turn off. My goodness. We are in a stalemate, Joe. Sooner or later, somebody is going to boss. But of course, we've got Lightning Energy boss in hand. These um, are our aggressive decks in the format, aren't they, Ross? This doesn't look like be. it. <laughs> but we've got the right energy on the Raging Bolt on the bench, so you can manually retreat and boss here. Yes. And this is exactly what we're going to see, and this is a problem, because Iron Hands is going down. Three energy. Essentially, all of Andrew's actions last turn being undone immediately by a huge bellowing thunder here. She actually was holding on to that boss's orders for a couple turns, and basically doesn't want to use any other action. Knows that he's going so far ahead with this KO. And this is quite a statement. Taking the grass energy and all off the bench, leaving a two energy on your Raging Bolt is going, you know, return KO in this. Yeah, even with a full bench. <laughs> Although Andrew can reach, I believe, with this Rondo. If you use your tandem unit for a couple uh, Zapdos, that should help you get over the line. Yeah, and you can go, and the, the Zapdos are easy. Oh, yes, you, oh, you don't want a top deck one. Uh, you can get that with my ride on. We could have done that for free. Could have done it for free. Oh, that's not fun. That feels so bad. Now you're, <laughs> so you're using tandem unit to get one because you top decked one when you could have top decked anything else and used tandem unit to get two of them. So remember how we do the Raikou Mass. You add up the bench Pokemon, add one times by two, put a zero on the end. That's what we taught you yesterday. Assuming a full bench here, then that leaves 10 which will get to 220. But of course, each Zapdos adding 10 damage will put you at 240. You will reach onto the Raging Bolt. And that means Shashi's lost a couple extra energy they didn't need to lose. That is true. And that could end up becoming important later on in the game if ever Shashi is left wanting some Sada. But it feels like with the hand right now, Shashi shouldn't have too much of an issue continuing with the pressure with Bellowing Thunder, has another Raging Bolt EX in the hand as well. So it can be on their way to powering up multiple Pokemon. There's already the Energy Retrieval in hand as well. So the Ogre Pond can continue to Teal Dance also. Yeah, you just need a Lightning Energy on the active and that is the KO established. And you can get that with the Energy Retrieval. Yeah, double Teal Dance thanks to the Energy Retrieval. Shashi's drawn into Trekking Shoes as well. Don't have the lightning energy yet, do we? No, I think we have Sada though, don't we? If it's not in hand, we at least have Poke Gear. So maybe we're gambling a little bit. Oh, the lightning energy is in hand. Okay, we're good. My color blindness strikes again. Yeah. We have so many different energy in Shashi's list. <laughs> Lots of they're not all the same at all. There's some different hollows. There's all sorts going on. Big Poke Gear though. Do we see a Sada? Yes, we do. So now we're good and golden. And Andrew can get the return KO here with two energy onto a Maridon or two energy onto a Raikou, although there's only one in the deck and no Pokemon recovery. But you will need a pivot and either an energy sticker or generator hit. If you get them, Andrew will be able to get the return KO, but that's asking, it feels like Andrew has so much more awkwardness every turn to navigate than Shashi yes. does. Shashi has guaranteed energy all the time. <laughs> Andrew has far from it. It's coin flips and it's looking at the top five cards. Shashi's holding on to a monster hand. We'll manually attach to this Raging Bolt EX as well. 
Does have Prime in hand now, yeah. not terribly relevant for this turn. You have to take out the Ryko, but could be relevant next turn for the final two prizes on a Squawkabilly, for instance, or something else. We're going to take away a Grass from each Ogre Pond, as well as one Lightning from the active. Shashi goes down to two prize cards. Essentially has to be hand disrupted by Andrew this turn, because we know he is holding on to the goods to close out this game. Does Andrew have access to Iono here? He's got Professor's Research, but that would on. I think there's Luminion V in hand. That's going to be important. There is an Energy Sticker in hand, Joe. There's an <laughs> Energy all, Sticker on the board, Joe. Following. Oh. oh. Well, it is a coin flip after all. I mean, one one for two does does kind of make sense. Oh, oh we didn't go right Luminion. V is an interesting one here. But this does mean we're not going to see any hand disruption. You can't use that with a jamming tower in play. That's not going to work. Yeah, and that was just pointed out by yeah. Shashi there going, you know this is in play, right? You're not using that, mate. Yeah. But maybe, maybe you draw into your one town store, turn it on. We got an energy sticker, Joe. <laughs> Good news, Ross. Double energy sticker in hand. We can see some extra energy coming into play. We need some head splits if my ride on EX is going oh, to attack. Oh, and we just see ah. Shashi there going, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. You can't hand disrupt me. I've got a lightning energy and a prime catcher. No matter what you do, I guarantee win next turn. What and if Andrew is playing Unfair Stamp? <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't seen an A spec yet. He hadn't seen an A spec yet. <laughs> But I think that was more a case of, I think we're done here. Yeah. That was more of a, do you have something? Like, here are the cards I've got. Should we keep playing? No. And Shashi takes the game 